Hello guys, in today's tutorial we're going to finish up our shop because it's here but we want it to want it to go down and then appear back whenever we want. Okay, and I made this image called shop, so I'm going to put the shop in the project sprites. So let's just drag and drop. And it's over there. It as you can see it says shop and in the canvas we're going to make a new image so UI image and I'm going to draw to drag and drop the, this shop that I just that I made into there into the sprite field okay and it gets all distorted so I'm going to preserve expect so that we can you know so we can use it in the correct aspect and I'm going to put it a big a little bit bigger like so and what I want to do is to make this be attached to the to the shop so where's the shop here is the shop so what I'm going to do is to make the shop be a, a child of the image as you can see if I move the, the shop it moves the actual shop which is that bar that has nothing in on it so I'm going to align this correctly so let me see if I can actually grab this and put it in here in the bottom like so okay and now they move correctly and like I said what I want to do is put this here in the bottom of the screen and whenever the player presses the shop button it goes up and it shows all of the items so let's start doing that first off what I'm going to do is to go into the add component and make it add a new UI button to make it easier. We could add an event, but adding a button is always easier because it comes with this button button properties that we can change later if we want. If you want, anyways. Now we're going to have to create some animations for this image and chop. So let me first off name this shop title. And now let's create some animations for it by going into the animation window. Okay, so I have here the animation window, and I'm going to create an animation. And one animation is not actually an animation; it's just it's just the chop down, the chop down. So I'm going to call this the default default shop, and Okay, this is the animation, it's the shop over there. I'm going to also create a, an animation called shop goes up, which is animation where first the shop is there, and then maybe like after half a second. The shop comes all the way into here, and that's it. Let's click here to stop animating, and that, let's see how that animation turned out. Okay, it looks fine. Now let's create another animation that is shop goes down. Save. And what we want with this is uh, first put after 30 seconds put the shop in here where it is actually and before in the beginning I want to I want to go I want to put the shop wherever it was so it was kind of uh, I'm not going to this with the exact measure so this will come out a little bit wobbly but you know it's you kind of get the idea with this so this way the shop will get down okay and with that then all we have to do now is to animate as is to use the animator to check whatever goes first and whatever doesn't so first we have the shop in the default position in the default position animation and what that actually is the default shop is the shop uh, I've, I've forgot to uh, to to animate it is the shop down that's the default shop so like that okay I click there to stop animating and now we have this and we want this is the default so it stays there usually 
and we're going to create a we're going to create here a parameter that will help us make the shop from going here to going up and then from going up and going down it will go like that those are two transitions now let's add the parameter so the parameter will be a ball called is up if the bull is true then I want the shop to go immediately up so let's add the here true okay it automatically adds it add it for us and also when it goes from down to up I also want to make that there okay and it, and in here this transition is when go is up is false like that now before we skip this I have, I have to do one last thing which is to make the shop goes down animation not loop so just uncheck loop time just as you have to uncheck the shop goes up uh, loop time okay now you now with that unchecked let's create let's create a script that controls this is up variable and I'm going to create a new variable a new game object that will handle all the buttons so buttons buttons master which handles the buttons so let's create here a new script called buttons master and this this script will control all these these buttons that actually don't need any other kind of variables they kind of work for themselves so yeah create your public animator called shop anim which is the animator of the shop that we're going to add in a moment and I'm going to create here a public function so public void called uh, shop control and this will be the function that controls the shop so so we want this to work like a toggle and we want to manipulate this is up field over here so as you may know to access field parameters over there all I have to do is to access the animator so shop anim dot get pool and this tells us what the bool is so all you have to do to set all I have to give is the the name of the bool and this will tell you this basically returns true or false depending on what the value of that bool is if is up then we want it to go down so all I have to do is to do shop anim dot set bool and the bool is is up and we want it to be false okay else if it is false then we want it to to make it true and that basically covers it let's cross our fingers so that this is this is working um, oh before we make it work we have to actually put the that function in here so click on a plus sign this is the shop title so this is this button over here and we're going to drag the buttons master into here and the function that we created was called shop control and in, actually in the buttons master we asked for the animator of the shop anim and and to do that all you have to drag is the shop title and it will find this animator over here for us automatically and now hopefully everything is working so there's the shop over there if I click it it goes up and if I click it again it goes down and that's basically it um, one last thing that I'm going to show you before ending all of this shop stuff is how, how to work with the scroll rect and I'll put a video in the description on how to use scroll rect and what the scroll rect is is actually something that you can click and drag and move around it will be easier to understand when I actually show you what it is so first off I'm going to click here to add a UI image to the shop title and I'm going to make that image fit 
the shop that we made in the, in the last tutorials so it has to fit its width the height can be whatever you want and you can actually not make it not show an image we only wanted that to appear there and we're going to add a component to it which is a UI scroll rect scroll rect and now this means that when you click this area you can scroll stuff and what we want to scroll we want to scroll the shop so there's two things that you need to do to scroll the shop so put the shop into the image or scroll rect because that's what it is now scroll rect and where it says here content you have to also drag the shop into there and now the shop will only appear inside the scroll rect uh, yep that's it now let me show you if this is working as you can see what the scroll rect allows us to do is to scroll to move this we're moving if I actually try to show you the, the scene we're moving inside the scroll rack, that's the scroll rack over there and the scroll rack allows us to move and push whatever, however we, we want and that's basically what the scroll rack does and imagine that I have and imagine that in the shop I have in, even more uh, items then with the scroll rack I can scroll through all of them and there's some features that we can actually uh, give to the sh the scroll rect, which is, for example, to make it only scroll vertically, so like this. Now we can't move it to the sides, only up and down. And there's this elastic field. We can make if you put it at one, it will probably bounce around a lot. As you can see, it bounces around like hell, and we don't want this. So you know, keep it small. There's also the inertia, which is the deceleration rate, rate, the sensitivity, which you know what it is, and there's also the mode. So if I put it uh, unrestricted, is not recommended because sometimes that makes the this goes away. This makes the whatever the content is inside the scroll like go away. So don't don't make it like that. Make it elastic or clamped. And clamp takes it that elasticity of, uh, effect. So when it goes up, it goes all the way up and doesn't bounce around just like that. And that's and, and that's basically it. That's how we want our scroll rack to be. So all I'm going to do is to uncheck again horizontal and make the movement type go back to clamp. And that's basically our shot. So thank you for watching and see you in the next tutorial.